This is Mongolian Mindset, and today we're going to be responding to one of our favorite subscribers, E. Kevin, a.k.a. the Psychiatric Ward. E. Kevin will deliver you to the ward, okay? Um, e. Kevin wants us to type Drake. I think he also wants us to do Will Smith. We'll do that in the future for you, but I told you I'd do Drake for you. Um, but, yeah. Um, we are still doing free typing sessions by us. Um... All you have to do is join the Facebook group or our Discord and message uh, our moderator, Cody. Please message Cody. Um, he's one of the moderators. So just click on the moderator tab and message him, um, and he'll get that set up. Um, one of the things we want to do is have the most accurate MBTI space or group, period. Um, I just want to let you guys know when you come into this group, this is not a loser forum. This is this is about winning. This is about being great. It's about being a champion. Um, if you're coming over here and you join the Mongolian mindset, it's because you want to take your life to the next level, and that's what we're all about. Um, like we say, we talk about finances, we talk about um, fitness, we talk about you know how you can prove based off of typology, Enneagram. We we got it all over here. So uh, if that sounds like you, then you need to go ahead and join. Um, eventually we want to climb the MBTI space and then we will transcend more to mainstream and we're taking the Mongolians with us all the way so join the team and we're not dominating if you guys aren't subscribing so we need you guys to subscribe so we can dominate okay um, we at war with everybody um, but yeah let's get into it so the monkeys over at personality database got Drake as an ENFJ with 1.1k votes Okay, we're going to use Linda Barron's temperament and interaction styles to figure out his actual personality type. Combine with cognitive functions, and we'll see if that's actually accurate. Okay, um, let's go to the chart because they got him as an ENFJ. So ENFJs are direct. Their outcome, their interests, their abstract, um, their T-I-F-E, uh, and their S-E-N-I. Okay, um... And they're affiliative, okay? So that's the metrics we're going to be looking for for the ENFJ. If we get that, then he's ENFJ. If not, we'll see what he is, okay? Okay, so let's get into the overall metrics here. You got initiating versus responding. Um, initiating people uh, are more front brain dominant, so the information travels, takes a shorter route. Um, personally, from Dario Nardi's uh, work, uh, The Neuroscience of Personality, this book here, um, ENFJs and ENTJs actually have the shortest route to get information out um, out of all the types. Um, that don't mean they're always correct, so always check what they say is correct. Um, but yeah, so initiating people generally tend to uh, change the topic. They feel okay leading. Um, they're okay with keeping people in a loop and stuff like that. Uh, some be more. And then you have the responding. So introverts, the information travels to the back of the brain. Um, so they primarily be responding because um, information has to travel quite a bit to for them. So um, they're going to be primarily responding. They kind of reflect, meditate, um, all of that type of thing. That's going to be more of the responding. Not really going to change topic much. Then you got the abstract versus concrete. Do they believe in the what if or do they believe in the what is? Um, abstract is all about the things that are outside of the five senses, contextual things, theories, uh, philosophies, um, metaphors, those type of things, and then the concrete is just basically like the what is, or they just keeping it dry, boring, just talking about experiences and what's happening today, or what happened in the past, or is that what they're talking about mostly? That's going to be more of the concrete. Okay, then you have systematic versus interest. Systematic is all about the best way to do something. Um, are these people installing st uh, structures to get more control of their life? That's basically what you're going to see with systematic people. And then you have interest versus motive. Like, are they always talking about like um, another person's interest or the, the motive behind something um, are they very careful of the motives of people um, that's gonna be more the motive to slash people okay are they haggling um, that type of thing then you have direct versus informative so direct is specific concise and to the point um, these people generally like to tell people what to do um, they have a direct and communication style so they choose their role in the conversation while informing people are vague, wordy, or passive, they beat around the bush, they don't choose their role in, in the conversation. So what they generally do is they will give you information, a lot of information, and allow you to uh, make the decision. That's more than informed the route. Um, personally, from between the direct and the informal uh, communications, today I think the best, com the, 
best language to have is probably informative because it keeps you out of trouble. You know, cancel culture is down everyone's throat. So um, if you're informative, you can kind of wiggle out of anything. I didn't really say that. Okay, that's, that's what you can do. So, But pragmatic versus affiliative. Pragmatic is all about like having a utilitarian mindset. Um, it's about individualistic individualism. Um, it's about um, being rebellious, a contrarian, uh, breaking rules, and then asking for getting to affiliative. is all about cooperation. Um, it's interdependent. It's about uh, having roles defined. As in pragmatic people like freedom, they don't like you to, to um, have roles, give them roles or whatnot. Um, so, yeah. <clears throat> then you got outcome versus progression. Are they generally homing down on the end product? Are they looking at the end product? Are they like, the journey doesn't count unless the, I got the outcome? Those are going to be more of the outcome people. And they're going to talk about that in the speech. Um, a lot of times you'll see like end product, end product, end product. Um, while it's progression, they're on the journey. They're not really to like it's okay if they get the outcome but the journey is the most important thing and, and when they talk it's kind of flows like a wave it's really well and you can tell that the end product is not as important okay then you have se and ni so se is all about manipulating the environment um generally when these people talk they're going to be recanting things from a third person perspective they're going to be talking about what other people are doing a lot a lot of the time um, they may use like physical items like pictures or other people as total memory totems. Um, this is going to be more of a short term memory. And then you have NI, what's the best path forward? Uh, what does my future say? What is most likely to happen? Um, that's going to be more of the NI uh, future focus. Also, abstract is future focus. I forgot to talk about that. And then you have SI. SI is all about referencing the past to the present. Um, <clears throat> these people like stability, they like comfort, um, they don't like to be uncomfortable. Then any is all about the possibilities in the abstract realm. Uh, what are all the paths forward? Um, they'll say things like all roads lead to Rome. That's an any statement. Okay, then you have TE and FIT is all about organization. Okay, um, and it's all about outside sources. So these people reference books, studies, statistics, um, that type of thing. Um, methodologies that should be more the te approach and then fi is what's the most important thing to that individual what are their values what they love what's their passion and you got tife and that's all about centered around understanding ti was understanding logical frameworks and applying that and to leverage things and then fe is all about understanding other people's feelings their values um what they care about so that's that And guys, like we said, please subscribe so that we can grow the channel, we can grow the group because we want to give back to you guys. You know, this is this is all about growing us and being the best. If this doesn't work out, I'm telling you, you got like, you know. But yes, we're here. Um, so excited to be here with you. In need of a W. I know we've been here a couple nights. Uh, tonight is amazing, though. Tonight, how, how, how did it went last time? It was. We, we, I won a little bit. I won a little bit. It, it was, was kind of... We picked up at the end. Yeah, we picked yeah, up at the end. Yeah. That's what matters. Yeah, um, it's how we end. It's how we end, yeah. But yes, we're here. It's how we end, that's the outcome. Okay, and Drake is initiating here. So you didn't put one up initiating here. Um, big night tonight. We know the holidays are coming up. We got incredible giveaways tonight. Uh, mm -hmm. Giving away $2 million, which is the most important. Outcome. Part of this, of course. I mean, if we win, that's nice. But if you guys win, we're we're happier about that. So if you guys we win, we're even happier. So that's more of an F E approach there. We're gonna try to make other people feel good. T I F E. Next. Big giveaways tonight. Uh, we got we got it. We got we got some real. We got a special. So if that eleven hits tonight, we have a thrilling surprise for everybody. By the way, it's gonna hit back to back. So yeah, back to back. Back to back. back. Eleven back to back. Um, and and me and Rosh are gonna start out. We we just figured it's the end of the year. He's an issue. We're gonna start out with a little like kind of year end recap conversation. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I got my drink here. You know, where's your drink? You didn't get a drink. I'm See, I'm gonna shop. He's initiating like crazy. 
Just straight shots. Yeah, what is that? This is like, it's tequila. Oh, baby. Hey, actually. That's the first question. That's like off the script. Mm. That's like, what's your favorite God, drink? Drake, I can't be watching interviews with your ass drinking, man. Come on, man. This guy here, man. This fucking guy. Okay, let's see. What do we have here? We will take. Uh, he's probably drinking on that one too. Let's see if we can take. He can't be drinking with LeBron. Hey, look, you put the camera on me. I want to say uh, Chris looks like Tommy Lee Davis. <laughs> he just initiated there as well. Put the camera on me. <laughs> A tall Tommy Lee Davis. <laughs> And just so people know, generally you don't want to get people drinking or on drugs in any of you. Start with these guys. I mean, we all have a connection, you know, uh, to this city, uh, to each other in some kind of way. At least for me, it's funny being in this scenario now after, you know, moving on to Miami from this town. We've already typed LeBron ESTP. And then coming back in a different capacity, but seeing how everybody has been successful in their own ways, that's what I'm most interested in, and, and just from you guys, I mean, where was the start? Well, I mean, you know, the start for me, you know, I'm going to get to the point where I am today and sit here with y'all being in this town. Um, but obviously, my start comes from a small city in Ohio, you know, and uh, everywhere I go, I, I talk about being from Akron and, and trying to give inspiration to kids and the youth and people of that nature. And then when you're able to become successful, you meet people in life that kind of help motivate you and inspire you. And you never know why people are putting into your life until you actually get around them. And it puts me in this position today where I'm sitting with two of the greatest guys that I've you know, ever encountered with, spent time with, done things obviously that people know about and some things that people don't know about, but how we just collectively inspired each other. And then you sit back and you just say, I'm truly blessed. And, you know, you at this table right now. I'd just like to say, just based off your attire, you're like the Lawrence Fishburne <laughs> <laughs> interviewing. Uh, I'm just going to preface with that, and then I'm just going to go into, uh, you that's know. A, that's a TE comparison there. Oh, for me, um, for, for me, like, well, I mean, how, how we all got here was like, when you were here, we were all just kind of admiring the fact that you were incredible at your craft and um and what you brought to the city you know you brought that sort of that that franchise feel to to, to our city and um and i always had a great admiration for you and then you know to meet you you're an, you're, you're an incredible person i mean that's that's kind of our story i i unfortunately didn't really get involved as much in the raptors or basketball element when we, when we first met i wish i was and then with braun i think for me it was it was kind of just the like ascending at, at similar times and I think one of the most pivotal moments for me in my career was was when when you showed up to the so far gone party in in Toronto that prominent marriage between like sports and entertainment right. it was really big for us and then damn Drake look young from there I mean not to be like like overly sentimental but you know you've obviously just been uh, uh, we're brothers and we're friends but you're one of the biggest inspirations, period. And like this guy's a lot of fe. If I think for mm -hmm. anybody that, that fe be kissing ass, bro. that like is is into like dominating and just being overwhelmingly incredible at, at what they do. So I mean, that's kind of how we're all here, I guess. Is that good enough? It's pretty good. All right. <laughs> you, you sold it pretty good, bro. Okay, all right. Well, I mean, I guess I'll just talk with my first experience with you guys. Uh, Brian, it was, we played each other. We ran. Chris I just remember, yeah, it. sure, whatever. By the end of the game, I'm asking, who is this guy? And somebody said, oh, that's LeBron James. And, Chris you know, Bob, it kind of stopped. care about you, man. So, hanging out, and everybody was just around, you know, and, and, and it didn't feel special, or it didn't. I mean, we were just happy to be hanging out. I know I was. I mean, for me, it was just nice to be able to do other things 
to go to parties, to hear records or to hear people doing their thing to get away from basketball, Mm -hmm. you know? And at the time, yeah, it seemed so unattainable, especially for a Canadian artist. Not that you're a Canadian artist, you know? No, 100%. But, you know, it it, kind of was a a negative connotation at the time, you know? And it was kind of, it's kind of a thing that puts you in a box and it's so crazy just to see you do so many great things do you remember how, you know, each step that you made on the way or is it kind of just some blur that Uh-oh. you just blink and then you're here? That's an outcome of a progression statement. It's been a journey, you know? Okay, you said journey. Um, and it's been incredible to do it this way. I guess the further we get, the more we forget the early stages. Even even when you talk about just being like getting the early stages, um, you were you know you were not from here, but you were a Canadian basketball player, right? Yeah. You know, so, <laughs> it's just it was it's tough to feel big. It's tough to feel. There was a time where it was really it was it was really tough to feel like we could ever transcend that so like this that actual literal border. It was tough to get over that border. Now I think we've developed like a whole new monster over the years. I think we probably have some of the most passionate, prideful fans, you know, we have a city that is so proud and we have like a, a bunch of people this, that, we have that are, S-E, S-E. you know, beyond diehard for not only basketball, but just for like what, everything that the city stands for. For sure, Toronto is one of the, the only place that no matter where I go in the world, I meet somebody from Toronto. Yeah. Everywhere I go. And they'll always they're tell not, you that they're crazy. from there and yeah. they'll always draw the parallel like, oh, I'm from Toronto, and they'll look at you like, recognize me, because we share that bond in life. We share this bond, talking about other so people. So I S-E, think as a city, we've all been on that journey for a long time, and I think maybe in the my last. journey again, but. Um, I mean, obviously, I think, it's, I think it started with Vince. I think it graduated to you, and then I think now we've gotten to a place where we've even created stars, you know, guys that have been on the team that maybe have gone to other teams after and wouldn't be stars, but they were stars here or they felt like stars here. I think that now we've got to... people feel that's F-E. ...to a point where if we were to ever get at this stage in basketball, that thing, you know, that, you know, that thing, you know what I'm saying? (laughs) If we were to ever get that guy... (laughs) If you ever had a, you know, but honestly though, not not joking around, but if you ever had a LeBron that came here and played, I think you would see something that you've never seen before. You know, yeah. the city is so appreciative of the efforts put forth. So it is a special place in that regard. I think that um, people come here and you definitely, you know, I, I know there's, it's the winter and the taxes and all that stuff, but you, I think the love, you gotta, you gotta feel sure. it. That's one of the things I definitely felt. And and it's funny because seeing me, you know, being able to play with a guy like Vince Carter, because that's what we're here for. What did Vince Carter mean to you as a basketball player? Because I know, like, for me, you know, Vince Sanity, half man, half amazing, we can keep going all day. But, like, what was it about Vince Carter that kind of you know, inspired you as a basketball So, player. I mean, I've been watching Vince since he was in high school, you know, even as a young kid and, um, you know, watched him in the McDonald's game. Obviously, I followed him. I mean, I was a huge, I wanted to go to North Carolina at the time, so him going to Carolina, it was like, okay, you know, watching Ed Cota, throwing the lobs to him with him. Watching Antoine this, watching Jamie. that, he just... He is S E S E S E, and all those guys on that team. So I'm watching. When you watch him, Vince, you are understanding this understanding guy is T. bigger than North Carolina. He's the guy in a college game that gets about 12 to 14 points, but you like he has no business out here on this court. Yeah, for sure. He's out here. This is just straight up. He's just straight for the conditioning. And when he gets to the next level, whoever gets him is gonna be is gonna be special. So, you know, Out for from. me and for all of us, it's something about it's something about basketball when a guy can literally, when you really look at him, you think he's flying. 
you like, what the fuck? How did he just do that? And Vince was that guy. Vince was that guy where you like, if he get one dribble inside that three-point line, you better move. Even in college, right? Even in college. <laughs> you better move or you're going to be on the poster. And every Out for then. a kid like myself who started to find his way with some athleticism, you looked at Vince like, damn, I ain't going to be able to get to that point. But if I can get half or three-fourths of it, you know, yeah. then I'm doing something right. So, and I didn't even know the passion of Canada or Toronto at the time. I had no idea. I just knew that what he was doing was something that um, the game really, we seen Mike bro, fly. Bro. We I, I mean, you know, I guess for you, Drake, being able to see a guy like that flying and being able to inspire a whole generation how did that feel being a kid in the city you know trying to inspire what you're trying to inspire but being able to see a guy with toronto across his chest mean this for basketball for me i i mean i didn't i didn't play ball so you know to hear bron talk about sort of the the technicalities of it is is amazing you know like to hear the the actual admiration for the, the the craft i mean we all watch we all watch we greatness all, right all. so it's you know when you get to it i'm hitting for se and i he's a se user okay we got let's see and i okay so with that being said he's a se and i user um, we did get him for initiating, but we'll, we'll just put an ash aside of it for now. We'll come back to it. We do have enough to call him initiating. He's an SENI user, and with that being said, ENFJ is still on the list. I mean, SENI is INFJ, ENFJ, INTJ, ENTJ. Uh, uh, ESTP. ESFP, ISFP, and ISTP. Okay, those are the ones we're looking at right now. It's SE user. Good job. Witness that it's, it's pretty it's pretty evident. But for me, it was it was different, man. For me, it was a time. You know, it was a time marker. Because when Vince was was popping in the city, we had nightclubs that seemed larger than life we had we had nightclubs s-e-n-i he's talking about end products here too Night celebrities clubs, coming to our city and performing performing <laughs> talking about other people doing outcome i would have never been here before we had rappers and people from here that were acting like we were in new york you know, people were driving different cars. People doing and this, people driving different cars. That's S E S E S. Starting businesses, and you know, he created starting a businesses. That's outcome culture for us that we had only seen on television. So, uh, what about that made him made you television. made you guys feel that way? You know what I'm Just saying? Just because we had somebody, and yeah. people were gravitating to us. You know. So everybody was like, oh, you're paying attention to that. Well, look, I got, you know, everybody kind of yeah. got like charged off, off his, off his energy, off his excitement. And he wouldn't shy away from it. That was the other thing. Vince wasn't like one of these guys that's like, oh yeah, I'm out here, but I'm going to just go straight home and you won't. See. I mean, he was like, yo, I want you to see me. I'm going to open a club in the city. You yeah, know, I'm going to go out. I'm going to be in, you know, he was in open music. Open club, you be see me, I'll come out. He was like, yeah. I think I rapped about it, but like, you know, Vince did like a cameo in like Cardinal, Glenn Lewis videos. Like that to me was crazy because those were guys that just, I didn't know if they could go that far at that time. I don't think any of us thought we could go that far at that time. And the next thing you know, you know, we got Jay-Z performing in like a parking lot for Rock the Caravana, which like we had never heard of in our life, but they just created an event around our city because we just had excitement. We finally had something, you know, and that's kind of what I talk about when I, or that's kind of what I mean when I, when I say like, you know, when you give this city something, they're gonna make it 
into everything. For sure. You know. For sure. That's you know, it's funny you say that, man. It's like one of the main things that I'm for gonna go ahead and hit him for initiating an outcome. And because we did get outcome, he did have two progression statements where he's talking about journey there. Uh, but he was initiating other interviews. Um, and he is outcome. He's looking he's talking about end products. He's just dropping end products, end products, end products, end products. So with that being said, that means Drake's an in charge type. So uh and he's an SE user. So ESTJ is already off the board. We're looking at ESTP. Um, ENTJ and ENFJ. So person that database can be right here. Um, ENFJs are initiating outcome S E N I and we almost one more point for T I F E and that's off the board and ENTJ will be crossed out. So it's looking like ENTJ is gonna be crossed out guys. So we're gonna be down to ESTP and ENTJ. ENFJ. Is he concrete? Is he abstract? We will see. Me as an athlete, Toronto made me feel welcome, feel special, you know, because you, I would definitely notice a difference. I'm here, people will recognize me, show love and everything. You go to the States, it's a little different, you know, and it was always one of those strange things where my family and friends would come in town and they'd be blown away just by how many people would show up at an appearance or at a game, or just sign up, you know, line up for autographs and stuff like that. And it made me, it's kind of a weird thing. I mean, you know, one of my friends, Joe, called me Michael Jackson and stuff, so I could only imagine for you. Well, you, know, you, how... look, you look like Blade right now. <laughs> <laughs> he does initiate it again, you look like Blade right now. <laughs> you know what I like where this is going? <laughs> I was ready for this. I was hoping this would happen. You remember when Eddie Murphy used to do the vampire movie? <laughs> do you remember when Eddie Murphy used to do that? Initiate the vampire. Vampire. You look like vampire and right now. You don't like my... No, it's, I love it. What is it? The, it's what, the which part B, is it? It's the double beats. With double beats? That's what I'm going for, though. With the knee like... Yeah, I'm going for the... You know, we taking blood. <laughs> I love it. I'm trying to put out there. Is it working? It's working. Awesome. Yeah, you're a legend. Yeah, big time. <laughs> and I like the, you know, the one chain, you know, small medallion. Set up. Very Marvin Gaye. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Turtleneck. Thank super you. Super dope. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, you, you know, boys. Brian got... <laughs> Why do Brian, I get thrown in this? I'm not in quality. Brian got three crests. Uh, why do I get thrown in this? Is it, what does each one mean? I mean, you know. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Toronto, it could just be one in the center. It couldn't be Canada. one big one. It couldn't like the three crests is the <laughs> Carter effect. <laughs> yeah. Perfect segue. Yeah. So we're doing. Uh, you know, you guys are doing this film about this uh, moment in time about this guy. How is it to be able um, to one uh, have the? Oh, so with that being said, with him being initiating an outcome that automatically makes him direct as well and have the vision to, to creatively put together something like what we're about to see. Because for one, I mean, me as an athlete and as a black man, to, to, you know, let's be honest, Toronto International Film Festival doesn't have a lot of color in it, you know? And if it does, it's probably something that doesn't fit this genre. How does it feel to be able to give back in this kind of way uh, and be creative at the same time? You got to give, we give all the credit to Vince, first of all, because he is the guy who, at the end of the day, is responsible for this film even coming together. I mean, without his passion for the game, without what he was able to accomplish both F. on the court, but also to be an inspire all the people that was here in Toronto at the time, the film wouldn't be able to even be possible. Um, but to go to the surface of it, for myself and for Drake, we have creative minds. And, and yes, we know, we know what our money maker is, and we know what we do. But our minds are, our minds are beyond what we do, and we are blessed to have outlets and people that allow our minds to be able to create opportunities like this, and to be able to bring it to the people. So, um, I think that's what ultimately it, it comes down to. And to give you another Vince story one more time before I give them the mic, no pun intended, to Drake. Um, 
Vince had kids actually believing that they can jump if they put on a pair of Nike shocks. Very true. <laughs> I, did I have a pair? You had a pair? I absolutely had the white and green. I had what? No, you, I had everybody didn't green. have a pair. Everybody had a pair. I didn't I, have a I, pair until I got drafted. I had a pair. Listen, if you, Vince, no, Vince really yeah. had you believing yeah. that the shock technology in yeah. <laughs> those shoes <laughs> would make you jump 100%. like that. No, 100%. There's, it's not a lot of, you got, you got MJ Air. Yeah. To make you believe Air. Yeah. You got Vince with shock. You got cross trainer with Bo. You, you know, you got a little something with me, but I ain't. I had some, it's not about me. Ah, <laughs> yeah. And we, see, we, we double air over here. 360 airbag plug, so plug. Three straps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we yeah. in here. We in here. But he really had you believing. <laughs> <laughs> he really had you believing that, man. Yeah. He, he really had you believing that. What was your first pair, though? What was your first pair? Mine was the, the black. I, yeah, the, the black, black the silver, the, the raptor color. Yeah, raptor color. The, the shock was. I didn't get him to the two. The shock was in silver. Were they in your locker when you got drafted? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Like, I got you. <laughs> Drake is enjoying bullying Chris. Uh, Chris Bosh here. All right, so let's get another one here. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and start it in the middle here. That's something different there. You know, I, I really do like that body of work. Do you listen to some of your old stuff? When I'm making a new album, yeah, okay. I'll reference it. I actually do this thing where I chart out all my, so I'll I'll write each track list out, and then I'll and then I'll pick a number. So I'll say like, you know, like right now I have like this this new album up up next with Take Care, and I'll say okay, like if I had to like let me take all the songs I have, the batch of songs, and let me start plugging them in places, and just see how does it stack up to to an album like that. So I, I, I often challenge myself in that way where I'll take an old album and just, you know, if I had to, if I had to clash that old album with this new album, what, what would I put where? What would be the intro that I would say, you know, could compete with Over My Dead Body? And what, you know, what's, what's going to be my Marvin's Room? What's going to be my headlines? What, you know, so just trying to, like, using it as a roadmap almost. So he has an outcome in mind. You mentioned uh, if you're reading this, you know, the intro is the legend, you know, mm -hmm. like talking about the legacy. At what point did you say, did you realize that, yo, I, if I die, I am a motherfucking legend? Um, again, I think it was just one of those, one of those, uh, those ov overly confident <laughs> statements that felt like a great note to start a, a album on. Um, I definitely think in the last probably five years uh, or four years, I've really realized that um, far after I'm gone from here, that I will be a part of music history. Um, and to me, that that is a legendary thing, you know, because it- He's talking about impact here, and he's talking about the outcome as well. There's just so many incredible artists over all these years, um, and you know, when I think back of people I used to just look at pictures of when I was like five years old or like, you know, and just to think that like people even mention my name in the same sentence as any of those individuals is, lets me know that I've, I've, I've accomplished something far beyond probably my wildest dreams, you know. But that project's obviously riddled in controversy because of Quentin Miller, right? right? A lot of people feel like, well, he helped you with some songs and even to this credit, I feel like you're still battling these ghostwriting rumors and this type of thing that in some sense, some sense, I think, does try to tarnish your legacy, whether it's effective or not. Like, does that, how does that album, how do you look back on that album and, and does that still take away anything from that album for you? Or how do you view it now when you look at it? No, I, I really have, you know, I've really made my peace. I have no embarrassment when it comes to what I did on that album. You know, I mean, I, I worked with somebody uh, on, I think four or five songs on that record. Uh, I pulled my weight when it came to my pen. It wasn't like I just, you know, I didn't, it wasn't like I needed somebody to facilitate, you know, entire ideas. We worked together. Um, and if I need to be the poster child that took all those hits for all my peers hiding behind me that do the same thing every fucking album, that's fine, uh -oh. I'll do it. Uh -oh. You know? Getting pragged there. He's coming out pragmatic there. 
Damn, we finally got something to come out. We finally got something to come out. Ready to facilitate, you know, entire ideas. We work together. Um, and if I need to be the poster child that took all those hits for all my peers hiding behind me that do the same thing every fucking album, it's fine, I'll do it. You know, because there's a lot of people that link up with other people and make records that you guys love, right. you know? And that's kind of how mu music is a collaborative thing, you know? It's, it's, and I understand in rap, I of understand course. understand and then the love, so we won't go ahead and peg him. For the T-I-F-E, Drake's a T-I-F-E user. So we are down to ESTP and ENFJ. I'm not seeing, so we're down to this this uh, because both of them are interest motive both of them are direct okay but we're also down to this these two so we will see I'm leaning more that Drake is concrete I'm not really seeing much abstraction from him two videos now in your comment section it's a little different because we we conduct ourselves, and I still associate myself in that community. We conduct ourselves by a few different rules. We tweak the rules a little bit, in the sense that if it's a look, it's okay. Yeah, it's like you know, there's things like that, you know. But you know, with that being said, like you know, I, I anybody that knows me knows that my strongest talent is writing. That is my strongest talent. I'm not a great singer. Uh, I'm a great. I'm a good performer. I've grown into a great performer. Um, but my greatest talent is writing, you know, and that's why people ask me to write songs for them. That's why people like to get in the room and write with me. And about yeah, people. I want to just encourage anybody like, look, if it makes a great song and you're the one that's voicing it, but it's you and this other person that's cooking it up, but you're, you're not doing anything wrong, you know? And that's like a, just, again, for me speaking to any new artist, like don't let anybody tell you that you're not supposed to collaborate on music. That's, that's what this is for. We should, you know, Whatever, whatever gets you to that destination where you have, you know, great whatever gets you to the destination, whatever gets you to the outcome, baby. work. If you need somebody to write the whole thing, and all you do is just go in and track it, there's still artists that, that exist like that to this day that people love and revere and they sell out tape. That's not you, though. That's, that's not me. No, that I've wrote all. By the way, yeah. all my biggest songs and any song that really, really did damage for me, I've wrote every single lyric. So that like the hits, yeah. Ooh, not even not the, the hits and the ones that you would like. It's like I never. I'm I'm not gonna collaborate with somebody on any of the timestamp records. I'm not collaborating. <laughs> I'm not collaborating with anybody on you know uh, Marvin's room or you know like yeah. the the R and B records that are you know other than me and Party. Like I love working with but Party. I think when you say the timestamp records, that is like the MC, like the, the bars, right? Yeah. So it's like. So I think the idea was like try to discredit using MC that that all of that doesn't come from your pen. Of course, you're saying that comes from your pen. But again, curated by the people who are ready to see the downfall of Drake. So yeah. again, just another another little like let's try this angle. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's really any like again like I said, I've done studio yeah, sessions with about, people. I was talking about people's motives. I'm, I'm all when I collaborate with people, I always send the idea first. Yeah. You know, I'm the one that picks the beat and goes, yo, here, just. Put a put a put a verse on this and take that for your album or yeah. your single or whatever. You know, I put work in. People know me. I'm good for it. Yeah. You know, so that's why I'm never really stressed about like that narrative. It's cool. It's fun. Again, it's yeah. cool for like memes and people that want to laugh and all that dumb shit. But How it's do like, you feel in that moment of me <laughs> sort of get mad here. putting that out there and then everything goes crazy, right? A guy that was your friend, you know, things things get a little oh, hectic with is. you guys at that point, right? Yeah, yeah. He was. Uh, I think he was in a he was in a bad mental spot and um see the first thing he yeah, talks he, about is the, the bad mental spot so it's more of an fe come on he just made like a, a a decision to to go crazy you know it was uh if i remember correctly it was based on a show that i didn't show up for that was really was like the tipping tip of the iceberg i think uh we had we had a little miscommunication and he was under the impression that i had confirmed that i was pulling up to one of his shows and i think it was one maybe one in philly and um, I didn't, and I didn't show up. And you know, my management or somebody reached out to say I wasn't coming. <clears throat> and I think you know that being coupled with whatever you know conversations were happening amongst him and his lady, and you know him just kind of getting this idea, maybe I don't fuck with him or whatever, whatever. Um, 
And, you know, he'll tell you himself he wasn't in the best mental spot at that time. And, you know, I think he just took a hard left and uh, decided to just go for it and felt like he had that enough ammunition to maybe, you know, put a major dent in my armor or, or decapitate me, you know? And, um, and again, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really, uh, I'm really good at, um, channeling those, those, that negativity and those pressures into pushing me to a next level where I just, I, I go into a, a calculated reactive space. Yeah. Charged up, back to back. You almost yeah. took a, the bully position. Like, where y'all at? Like, yeah, I mean, I just, <laughs> I just felt like, I just felt like, you know, in that moment, I was like, all right, well, if we're talking about music, let me just show you better than I can tweet you, you know, or better than I can right. text you. Let me, I'm just gonna show you what I'm about. Um, I show you what I'm and about. I don't think, I, I, I don't think anybody really. Ex- let me just show you out to this pragmatic. Expected me to just jump out there and, and defend myself and go, and go first. And yeah, twice, and, 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 and second. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I think yeah, you know, charged up was was um, was a was a thing that you know I was just seeing. I was just seeing if it was real. I was just seeing if it was because you know you never know how calculated someone's plan is. Maybe they've been sitting on the record for six months. They hated you all this time, mm-hmm. and they and they just want to fry you. Right. And so charged up was my way of being like, you know, is it real or is this just like a sporadic like, like outburst? A you know, yeah. I just wanted to know if it was real, if it was a package, or if it was just like maybe like a mistake on his part, you know. And I started to realize that it was. Um, taking an adversarial yeah. stance in a sense. So. Yeah, yeah, and then, um, and then, I had made the decision that I was gonna. Um, I made the decision that I was gonna uh, go again, mm-hmm. and uh, I, I remember I was, I was working on some, some beat. I think it was like a Boy Wonder beat or something like that. And it was like kind of more like, rappy. Mm-hmm. You know, it was gonna be another like hundred bar, thing, and uh, and. Um, I was with Serena at the time, and uh, we had been talking a lot about um, about her and Sharapova going back and forth over the years. And um, she had made this made this comment to me, and she was like, "Well, look, um, if you're gonna go, if you're gonna See, go, he's with- talking about what other people are doing. That's like primarily what he's doing. And he says he's heavy." Again, you know, you you that she's like that beat that's on in there. It's just that she's like you gotta finish it. She, and you know, she's a top competitor. Right. So she was like, you gotta finish it. Like, I'm talking about done, mm-hmm. over. And it's gotta be something that, that everyone that he's with and him have to hear. Mm-hmm. Can't ignore it. Right. Yeah. You, can't, you can't do some sh- shit that's just for the moment and then it goes away. Yeah. She kind of put this battery in my back, funny <laughs> enough. Uh, and then at the, at the time- We need to type Serena now. I'm just, you know, again, timing. Yeah. This kid Dax uh, walked in the walked in the studio and never met him before. Played a beat, and that was the first beat. Right. And it was slow. It was super slow. It was way slower than it was. And then I told Forty like, "Yo, speed speed it up a bit." And that was just when we heard that. Mm. Mm. I just went into demon mode. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, and then. You know, from I mean, I really, you know, I don't, I don't like to glorify the situation yeah. or talk about it too much, obviously because. But I'm just giving you the background on how it happened. But you know, I'm not trying to sit here and be like, yeah, my record was something. <laughs> you know, it's, it's good reconciliation. He's I mean, not like bragging about his record. Bring him out, like even a lot has like happened best after that battle, right? I mean, you could, all, you could do a whole thirty for thirty on that <laughs> that battle, right? But well, yeah, there's. A, I mean, <laughs> by the way, you know, also these things go to another another place, right? So yeah. you know, one thing I could tell you firsthand is like. You know, Meek's not a pretender. He's not a joker. He's not like beefing with some of these other rap guys, where it's like their story's all made up and they're they're really not their their character's not like that. Meek's Meek's really about that. Mm-hmm. And so you know, and I can tell you firsthand, mm-hmm. straight up. You know, I'm not, I'm not gonna. You know, I know obviously yeah. he's made a change yeah. in his life, but I'll, t- I'll be but, I'll be the first to tell you that Meek's, but, Meek's that guy for real. So it's like I wasn't beefing with no punk, right? You know, and it's like. Um, yeah, for, for for us to be able to turn that turn that uh turn that around was a was a big thing. I think I think we both felt an obligation just to everybody that had eyes on us. All these young kids, we had to turn that around because we know how far it would it could it, 
it was going yeah. and I almost went, you know? So. What are you talking about, reconciliation? Uh, I'm done here. He's ESTP. He's concrete. I want to make sure that he was concrete. We were down to ENFJ and E. <clears throat> ENFJ and ESTP, um, and Drake is concrete. Okay, so with that being said, Drake is an ESTP. I was hoping we'd see some abstraction and maybe personality database would be right, but unfortunately they're not. So he's also pragmatic. We did get pragmatic statements here and there, individualistic, especially with the meat meals thing. But uh, yeah, this was fun. E. Kevin, hope you enjoyed, man. But this is Mongolian mindset and we're out.